and welcome to GMBN Tech Ask Show, which is where you use hashtag AskGMBN Tech down in the comments of any of our videos, and we'll get back to you with an answer. Although today I'm actually answering questions from Instagram and it's all on suspension. So let's get started. Uh, Sean's 47 says, please make a video explaining low and high speed compression and rebound, uh, where to start a setup when you get a new fork and explain it simply, please. <laughs> um, we have done, we've done many videos on suspension setup and where to start, but let me break down what these things mean so that you can get an idea of uh, where to start for you. So um, you have obviously low speed um, compression and rebound. So low speed just means your suspension compressing or rebounding slowly. So it actuating slowly. So this could be, for example, when you're going into a corner, it could be when you're actuating the brakes and your suspension moves slightly under your body weight. Then there is high speed, which is, well, as it says, high speed, fast, any fast movements on your suspension. Now, this could be when your front wheel goes over a big square edged hit, for example, and it compresses quickly. It could be you landing a jump, for example, and all of your weight pushing into the suspension really quickly. So those are the two things. Um, so we start to break down your low speed compression and rebound. Rebound, so compression, for example, is your fork compressing and rebound is your fork extending. So if you were controlling the low speed compression, it would be your fork compressing under slow movements like corners and then controlling the low speed rebound is how quickly you want your fork to, or how easily you want your fork to extend back into its full travel. And then high speed is the same, but for faster movements. So how easily you want your suspension to actuate or compress uh, when it's going quickly and how easily or fast you want your fork to rebound and extend back into its full travel. So if, um, for example, your forks are diving into a corner or when you're actuating your brakes on say a steep descent um, and they're compressing too easily for you and there's not enough support in that slow movement, then you want to add more clicks because you are adding damping. You are adding compression damping. So think of damping more like a resistance. So you want more resistance when you're doing your slow speed compression, then you add compression damping, just as an example. Um, and in terms of setting up, because you've asked about setting up where to start, um, some people like to start in the middle of everything and then just keep running down their favorite trails and start playing with the dials, uh, two or more clicks one way, two or more clicks the other way, and see which one they prefer and then just keep building from then on because there's no right or wrong answer, really. Um, or you can go onto your manufacturer's website and see what they recommend for your body weight or for the air pressure that you've put in your suspension. Um, and on that point, I would say that is the best place to start and so many people get this wrong and that's putting the right amount of air into the suspension for their body weight so that you get the correct sag. If you don't have enough air, for example, it's going to feel very wallowy regardless of what you do with the dials. If there's too much, it's going to feel rough even if you make everything quite supple in the dials. So get your sag and your air pressure right. I always measure my sag with a ruler and work out the percentage, say for example 25% or 30% 30, 30 uh, rather than just relying on an air chart and assuming that that is the right sag. Um, but hopefully that is a, a quick overview for you and then check out one of our other videos which I'll leave in the description below which will be more detail on how to set them up. Uh, so next up, uh, Jay Holton 85 says, what's most important, a good suspension fork or a good rear shock? 
Ooh, well, I wouldn't have a good shock and then a rigid fork, for example. And there are many people out there that are quite happy on a hard tail and a good fork. So um, I think if you're asking because you're in the market for upgrading one of your shocks on a full suspension, for example, um, then I personally prefer a good fork. Uh, I think it's like your first point of call on a trail. Um, but I've also had bikes that have been quite imbalanced and that feels pretty not fun either. Um, I would say first up, setup needs to be really important before you're talking about upgrading. Is your setup nice and balanced? Is your rear performing as well as your front in terms of setting up all your dials. Um, if you don't have many dials or many opportunities to uh, play with the setup of your suspension and that's why you're thinking of upgrading, um, then what I will say is you can upgrade uh, certain parts of your suspension rather than going out and buying completely new. So if you've got, say, a rear shock and a um, a front fork that is quite basic, there are some forks and shocks that you can upgrade, say the damper, for example. So you could get a new damper in the forks. Um, you could get a change of shim stack. So you can change different uh, tunes to say your rear suspension. Maybe if you find that it's um, a bit too rough, a bit too over damped, you could potentially go for a lighter tune and you'd go to a service uh, suspension specialist and get them to change the shims in your damper to get a more supple, a lighter tune to your rear instead of just buying a whole new one. Um, and at the front, you can say, for example, with Fox, you can upgrade the damper to the grip two, uh, potentially in your fork with many of the forks. So you could get the top end damper with the VVC, the variable valve um, in there to make that damper feel a lot better without having to go and buy new. And that kind of thing can be done by a specialist. And yes, it can be about 500 pounds to get a damper fitted. Um, but that's definitely, well, almost half the value of a brand new set of forks. So um, what I'm trying to say is you might actually be able to do both just with upgrades instead of buying one or the other. So go and speak to a suspension service specialist and see what they can do for you. Uh, so Thomas Hugh 07 says, does Kashima coating give you a statistical advantage? Um, okay, so Kashima is a form of an hard anodizing uh, where it fills the metal stanchions. It fills all of those tiny little pores so that it's super silky smooth. And that has less stiction or friction in um, your stanchions and your forks should work better. However, whether you would notice that or not is by the by. When it comes to Fox forks, Kashima tends to only end up on the top spec forks anyway. And I would say you would certainly notice the upgraded damper, say a Grip 2 over a Fit 4 anyway. Um, and I think that's what you would notice more than probably the Kashima. But you know, it's a nice little bonus on the top spec uh, factory fork. Uh, Federico Bossio NK31 says, why modern suspension keep reducing hydraulics performance? I find that compared to older models, recent shocks and forks tend to have a very open shims, very giving very low support under weight shifts. I swapped a grip to 2021 um, in a Marzocchi Z1 coil and at 20% sag, I needed to run low speed compression at one click from totally closed. Um, same thing happens in my Katsuma at the rear um, th at 30% sag and needs almost totally closed compression to kind of work. Um, okay, so your shock could potentially um, have a light tune in it. Uh, so what I mean by that, you've mentioned shim stacks and it is exactly that. It might not be a modern day thing. It might be um, 
the shock that you purchased off the shelf might have had a medium or a light tune to it. Uh, it might be that if you bought it maybe secondhand, it came on a bike that required a light or a medium tune. And maybe your riding style or your body weight just blows through that. It's it's too, too uh, easy, I guess, to compress because it's got this light compression tune. Um, and so you're running, you know, right at one end of the scale. Now you could take that to a suspension service specialist and you can get those shims changed. So you can make the, um, uh, you know, the compression tune a lot um, firmer, tougher, I guess, more, more damping for you um, and have a, a heavy tune. It's what we require, uh, what we talk about. Um, and that will effectively um, make it so much firmer in the feeling from the outset that your clicks will effectively feel like it's moved up. So you'll be somewhere in the middle of the block on that low speed compression click um, instead of somewhere at the end. And then you will feel like you'll have more um, movement either way. So, um, uh, sort of waffly answer, sure go and get your shim stacks checked by a professional, or you might even be able to find uh, your serial number on the model and check that online to see if you can work out whether it had a light, medium, or a heavy tune. And if it was too light for you, get that fixed. Uh, Alfonso660 says, why can't they sort out small bump sensitivity? These bikes cost a small fortune, uh, yet the handling is shocking out of the box. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's the bike's fault. You say the bike's got shocking handling. Um, it depends, you know, who is they? Who are you talking about? Um, if you had rock shocks, for example, um, even the high end rock shocks, I would say they do have a sort of a bedding in um, time, if you like, and then start feeling supple and then they feel great. Um, if you're riding Fox, um, I've got to ask, are you riding low end ones or have you tried, say, the Grip 2 Damper, which is their top end? Um, because I think they're so good on small bump uh, sensitivity that I'd be surprised if you um, didn't like that. If you have tried the top end uh, Rock Shocks and Fox and you're still not getting on with them, I would say go and see a suspension specialist and explain what it is you're not liking about the small bump sensitivity in your bike and see if they can fix it. Um, I've just been talking about shim stacks, maybe that you're a candidate for that, or maybe if you're all about that small bump, maybe you're a candidate for coil and you might want to check out something like that. See if you can get hold of a demo and see if that fixes it for you. Uh, so I can six. What's the worst that can happen if I remove my air shock and install a coil? Um, the worst that can happen? I mean, assuming you've got the right size uh, shock for your bike and for the stroke and assuming you've got the correct coil for your body weight and it's all set up um, the sag correctly, uh, then the worst that can happen is you won't like it and you've spent all that money on a new shock. Um, I feel like, um, you know, coil is great for small bump sensitivity, as I mentioned earlier. Um, it's also quite linear as well. So you don't get that kind of ramp up in the suspension where it gets firmer, the deeper it goes into its travel. And you've just got to work out beforehand whether you're going to like that. If you're someone who likes a sort of a progressive, slightly bottomless feel, um, maybe you're a person who puts a lot of air tokens in their suspension, then you might like progressive and you possibly won't like coil. Although you can technically buy some progressive springs for coil, which might give you the best of both worlds. Um, but to answer your question, what's the worst that can happen? You might not like it. <laughs> and that is the worst that can happen. But get some um, advice, see if you can get hold of a demo maybe or borrow something from a friend um, just to try it out. So Juan um, Heineken says, why did single pivots go by the wayside when they clearly work so well? Uh, not to hear it from, I want to hear it from someone uh, other than Joe at Starling. Yeah, okay, so 
single pivots do tend to be on a lot of independent steel bikes, which is why you've um, mentioned uh, Joe at Starling. But hey, Nuke Proof Giga single pivot, uh, the Merida 160, which just dropped last year, that is also a single pivot, um, albeit it's got a bit of a flex stay, it is a single pivot. Um, most of the high pivot bikes out there are single pivots, albeit a high single pivot. Um, they are single pivots. So um, have I got any more? Let me see. There's the Saracen Aerial I've written down here. Um, Orange is still flying the flag. You've got the Stage. Uh, Giant even dropped their Maestro linkage for si single pivot on the Anthem recently, uh, obviously deciding that single pivot was king. Um, any more? I don't know. Maybe I've missed some. <laughs> Guys, have I missed any single pivots that have come out recently? Because I think we need to let Wan Heineken know that it's not dead just yet. And we still love it. Let me know if you know any single pivots down in the comments below. And if you have any questions, then use hashtag AskGNBNTech down in the comments and we'll try and get back to you with an answer. But thanks for now. Goodbye.